on through. Carry on up the jungle. Up the jungle. Now ask who out of homes to do his mayaha. Kitiao <laughs> No ne tārai kahuri a te ao nei mō tātou tini uri, no a wai ki nui, a wai ki roa, a wai ki pāma māo ki ono i wairua, te he Māori ora, te he Māori mate. A te pai no hoki nei, a te tai au nei, ki te kiti a rā nei, a mātou nei, a tēnei tā mātou tino a hiahi. A ko kāpo ka tau mahaka ki tērā taha, tāi no atu nei ki whānau paki ki tērā, Huri no atu nei ki tō mātou mū upoko e tau ana ki tērā taha. Mea mātou au e whakarele ana rā nei ki tai o rabu vai nei. A te pai no hoki tēnei āhua kai tātou tahi. No mai, haramai, tauti mai. So welcome three times everyone this afternoon. It's really good to see you on this wonderful uh, Dunedin day where the sun always shines. We started off with the cosmology this afternoon the uh, history of the whole area right from the beginning of time, uh, during that or from that most infinite, most darkest, most empty void, right to this very moment where we're now assembled under the roof of this fine building. I know my haramai toti mai kairaru maru nei a mato tini marae hola nei a no otako ki rava hi atu ki tera taha a tai no atu nei. A ki tō mātou marae, a ki murihiku. A tae nō atu nei, a ki a, a puketi raki, ki tua rā, ngā mauka rā nei, ki tērā taha. Tae nō atu nei, ki moira, ki hoki. Mea tō mātou a kaeka anō hoki nei, ki riu o kaikarai. So welcome here from the many marais that are spread around the place. From Otaka across the bay there, uh, right down to our relations in murihiku, with our Mariah at Hokunui, and right through the hill there uh, to uh, Pukitiraki, and uh, further uh, northward uh, towards Muiraki. Uh, we've already welcomed you under the, our mountains here, and we've already welcomed you within the precincts of our fine harbour. As you all know, the sun always shines here in Otipoti. We never have rain or anything of that nature at all here. It's always a beautiful day like this. And the old folk used to ask us when we were brought up in the Mutton Bird Islands, they used to always ask, why are they here? Ko wai mā rātou nei e noho ana ki raro nei nā. Who are they? And what, what are they up to? And we'd think about that for a while, and then we would ask ourselves a more important question. Uh, why are we here? Yes, that's very important. O te rā i tēnei ahi ahi, a tēnō mā mā haere nei taua whakahokia. It's a very easy question to answer this afternoon. As we look into the eyes of the audience, uh, me kite kite a ngā karoa me ngā kuea, a e kite anu hoki nei ki o mātou rangatahi e tau ana. E kite a mātou 
ano hoki ki a matutaku iti. As we look into the eyes of the audience, we see a, an intergenerational assembly. The families, the friends, all of those who have come to celebrate the day, as we all are doing at this very moment. O te rā, ko tā mātou tēnō mātou ki te arangatauira e ki te kitea e mātou kē e tātou tahi ki te rātahi. But of course, our main focus this afternoon are on our tauira or our students over there. We also give thought to the wise ones who stand on this side, those who have offered their expertise to bring us this, to this point in our adventure. Nō reira, Ka nui a mātou mihi atu ki a kūtu, a te paina hoki a te ahu a te rangi, a me ngā atu a ke manaki. Ai, ai ake nei, ai, he we anō. A ki te mea, mea pai ake, a he wai a te mātātou. If that welcome isn't warm enough, uh, they won't sing a song, but if it is, they'll sing a song to uh, actually support what we've said just a few moments ago in welcome to you all. from the tallest tree in the forest to the largest tree in the forest. Let us just think about that for a moment and think how we feel today after achieving so much. So be it. Te tautaragi Māori e ku haitarongo ke tu kotahi ai tātou a ekene ai. Heo i anō. Thank you, Huata. Tanakauto, Tenakauto, Tenakauto Katoa has worshipped the Mayor Dave Cull, members of Parliament, honourable guests, graduates, our online viewers, family and friends. Welcome to this special occasion, an occasion that is definitely joyous and one that we want to celebrate. So, to start the celebration this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce Cathy Grant, the Chair of Otago Polytechnic Council. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon on behalf of the Otago Polytechnic Council. This is a day for celebration, and to the graduating students, you are the reason we have gathered this afternoon to recognise your achievements and to celebrate your success. This is very much your day, and on behalf of the Council, I extend my warmest congratulations to all 380 of you who will cross the stage. The Polytechnic, I know, has been enriched by your diversity, your personal attributes, and your unique qualities. Some of you have moved directly from secondary to tertiary education. Others of you have had the opportunity to build on and develop workplace skills and experiences and an increasing proportion of you have come from other parts of New Zealand to study at Otago. Thank you all for undertaking your chosen qualification at Otago. We are proud of our Polytechnic and of you, our graduating students. Now, the view from, this, from the stage reveals very clearly the pride and joy being experienced by those on this side of the town hall and those upstairs, because this is also a significant occasion for those who have supported you during your studies, your friends, your family, and your fellow students. Each of you will know the extent and value of that support, and I would encourage you to reflect on those who have supported you 
on your individual journeys. That support may have involved personal sacrifice on their part, so be generous in acknowledging the extent to which others have contributed to the success that you are now enjoying. In all of the other years when I've spoken at graduation, I've commented on how successful each of those years has been for the Polytechnic. And in 2013, those very positive outcomes continued across all dimensions of our institution. I'm delighted to report that comparative data published by the Tertiary Education Commission in 2013 established that Otago Polytechnic continues to be a leading provider in this sector, particularly in relation to qualification completions and course completions. And what is particularly pleasing for us as an institution is that in our 2013 survey measuring student engagement, 89% of those who responded indicated that they would attend Otago Polytechnic again if given the choice to start again. Our students have continued to experience success both nationally and internationally. The School of Design featured in Vogue Italia for the fourth successive year. A number of our fashion design students were selected to exhibit at Shanghai Fashion Week and we, in turn, had the opportunity to host Shanghai students at our collections fashion show in November. And the Scarfi Army, inspired by the remarkable success of Christchurch's student volunteer army, undertook a range of projects within the community. As an institution, we value our relationship with our regional stakeholders and work towards supporting production and innovation in the local economy. I'm delighted to report that one of our development centres won a silver award for the production of a single blade wind turbine in conjunction with Powerhouse Wind. We are moving very successfully into the international student market with the development of our international campus in Auckland which in its first full year of operation has exceeded all of its projected targets. In 2013, the Chief Executive and I led a study tour for a number of staff to Hong Kong and China. A study tour of that nature was a first for the institution and provided the opportunity to both experience the cultures from which many of our international students are drawn and to visit those educational institutions with which the Polytechnic has reciprocal relationships. Otago Polytechnic continues to play a leading role in the wider tertiary sector, and in 2013, the Open Education Foundation, which was founded by the Polytechnic and which continues to be based with us, launched an international initiative at Thompson Rivers University in British Columbia, offering free academic courses for students on a worldwide basis. It is anticipated that this form of tertiary learning will become increasingly significant in the future, offering online affordable tertiary education accessible to all. The Polytechnic also commissioned an external evaluation as to the manner in, in which and the extent to which it is implementing the Memorandum of Understanding between the combined Runaka and the Polytechnic. The results of that audit are still being evaluated, but the preliminary indications are particularly positive and reveal significant progress since the last audit in 2011. As I commented earlier, an increasing proportion of our students now come from outside our institutional's regional catchment. And in 2013, 
our EFTs, or the number of our equivalent full-time students, exceeded 4,000 for the first time since 2005. All of those successes reflect on the commitment and dedication of the Chief Executive and all of his staff, both academic and general, and I'd invite you all to join me in acknowledging their role in the success of our students. I started by remarking that for the graduating students, it was the end of a journey that you had each completed the course of study on which you had embarked, and that today was all about recognizing that achievement. But today is also about beginnings, the beginning of new careers, armed with your brand new qualifications, and for many of you, the beginning of a whole range of experiences beyond the Polytechnic. I hope that you take with you good memories of your time as an Otago Polytechnic student, and we hope that our connection with you will be strong and continuing. On behalf of the Council, I congratulate each of you on what you have achieved. I wish you well in your future endeavours and encourage you to embrace the challenges ahead of you. No reira, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. Thank you, Cathy, for that acknowledgement and your kind words. We will now have the presentation of an Otago Polytechnic Council Award of the Emeritus Member of Otago Polytechnic. So it gives me great pleasure to invite Sue Thompson, Director of Quality, to present Dr Maxine Alterio to Cathy Grant, the Chair of Otago Polytechnic Council, and Phil Kerr, the Chief Executive. The Council of Otago Polytechnic has an honours policy which enables individuals who have made outstanding contributions to the Polytechnic and or the wider community to be recognised. A nomination was made to Council on behalf of the leadership team and a significant number of Otago Polytechnic staff for the honorary ward of Emeritus Member of Otago Polytechnic to be awarded to Dr Maxine Alterio. The nomination also had the support of the Tertiary Education Union. Council resolved to make this award in recognition of Maxine's outstanding contribution to Otago Polytechnic. Maxine joined the staff at Otago Polytechnic on the 24th of May 1990 from Southland Polytechnic. Her initial role at Otago Polytechnic was as the trainer for the very first electronic student management system, which was called PROMIS. Following the introduction of Primus, she was appointed as a Staff Development Officer, a role that she continued in into, um, early in 2013 when she left the Polytechnic. However, because of her specific skills and expertise, she still does some work for Otago Polytechnic as a contractor, including supporting the Polytechnic's nominees for the National Tertiary Teaching Excellence Awards. During her time as a staff developer, Maxine also completed considerable personal and professional development which directly related to her work and from which her work benefited. She graduated from Otago University with a Bachelor of Arts in Education in 1995 and in 1996 she completed a Diploma in Teaching Tertiary which was delivered by Christchurch Polytechnic in conjunction with Christchurch College of Education and Otago Polytechnic. In 1998, she again graduated from the University of Otago with a Masters of Arts in Education with Distinction. In 2013, she completed a PhD from Victoria University's Institute of Modern Letters. 
Much of Maxine's professional development is focused on the use of reflective teaching practice, storytelling and narrative as vehicles for exemplifying practice and conducting research using the context of contemporary education. All of her learning has been directly applied to the work that she does for staff and students at Otago Polytechnic. Maxine has delivered taught courses and supported and mentored staff in a range of areas, including professional and educational practices, self-directed and work-based learning, self and peer review processes, reflective inquiry, qualitative research methodologies, and creative and scholarly writing. She has a significant research portfolio resulting from her areas of expertise and has worked with staff and students on externally funded projects around learning and teaching. In 2010, her skills and expertise as an educator were recognised nationally when she received an Ako Aotearoa National Sustained Excellence in Tertiary Teaching Award. It was particularly fitting that Maxine received this award as she has mentored all Otago Polytechnic's nominees for these awards and the six other Otago Polytechnic recipients of these awards. Alongside her academic strengths, Maxine is a skilled and imaginative writer of sh short stories, many of which have been published and read on radio. She has also written and published two novels, which combine historic, historical accuracy with absorbingly poignant fiction. Her most recent novel, Lives We Leave Behind, set in the First World War, has also been published in French. She is the recipient of the 2013 Sarazin Landfall Otago University Press Residency in recognition of her authorship. She is also the Vice President, National Council of the New Zealand Society of Authors, the Chair of the Selection Panel for the New Zealand Society of Authors, and the Mentor and Manuscript Assessment Programs, and the New Zealand Society of Authors Branch Representative on the University of Otago Burns Fellowship Selection Panel. This award is appropriate recognition of Maxine's contribution to the Polytechnic and enhances the continuation of a long and valued relationship. Dr. Maxine Alterio. Congratulations, Maxine, and thank you, Sue. So it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Linda Wilson. Linda was the inaugural Head of School of Occupational Therapy here at Otago Polytechnic, which opened in 1990. Linda came to Otago Polytechnic with an extensive career in occupational therapy and a background in professional and health service management. In 2009, she was awarded a Fulbright Senior Scholar tra Travel Award to study and present in the USA. Since 2006, Linda has been a principal lecturer in the School of Occupational Therapy and was chair of the Institutional Research Ethics Committee until 2013. Linda has practiced occupational therapy in New Zealand, Australia, Hong Kong and Britain. She has over 19 peer-reviewed journal articles and given over 60 conference presentations and until recently chaired the Institutional Research Ethics Committee. Linda, we look forward to your address. Thank you, Mike. I want to uh, acknowledge all of those present today, family, 
staff, local parliamentarians, members of the uh, City Council, staff of Otago Polytechnic Council, and students. What I have to offer today is directly related to the Māori Kamura Kamuri, the concept of walking backwards into the future, which bears a remarkable similarity to the observation of the Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, who effectively said that life can only be understood backwards, even if you think you're living it forwards. I'm taking advantage of the fact that I've, long, that I've lived longer than uh, most, but possibly not all, of today's graduates uh, to offer you some observations as I look back down my professional path in the hopes that I can make your life path a smidgen smoother. I am expecting that some of these suggestions for path smoothing will stay with you as you get on with the next phase of your life, be it more work, uh, more study, travel or play. And the five suggestions I am going to make do have an increased likelihood of staying with you over, for example, a random comment in a coffee shop because today you are graduating and some of you will be listening to what I say as part of the special commemorations. Of course, some of you won't be hearing anything because you're so nervous about whether you're going to keep your footing as you work up the stage and others will be muttering about how hot it is and having to go back to work tomorrow. Graduation deserves a special commemoration. Your qualifications and that you have gained them is worth noticing. Most of the days of our lives are not. Most of the days of our lives are pretty much the same. We, in some order or another, get up, go to the loo, have a cup of tea or coffee, eat, get dressed, and do whatever is on the agenda for the day, and before we know it, we're back in bed. The majority of the days of our lives are pretty ordinary, and that's why it's worth having occasional days that actually are extraordinary. Days like today, when we can stop and acknowledge what we have achieved. Nobody here is graduating by accident. Graduation is an acknowledgement that you have completed something something that other people are prepared to say you can do, you know, and that you are good at. Acknowledging this successful completion doesn't mean that some of you won't have those little voices in your head saying that you should have worked harder and got more A's or you shouldn't have drunk as much or possibly even one or two people saying, thank goodness this is over and I'm never going to do this again as long as I live. You have completed this and by completing a tertiary qualification in New Zealand, you are more likely to earn over the next three to four years considerably more than somebody who didn't take on tertiary study. If you're getting a bachelor's degree, possibly up to 50% more. And you will earn more whether or not you work in the field that you have qualified in. You now officially have some knowledge, skills and attitudes that other people will respect, find useful and pay you money to use on their behalf for their pleasure or for their benefit. Why? Because despite what the deeply spiritual might tell us, most of the world values doing as well as, if not more, than being. It's by doing things, such as the work that you prepared for through this qualification, that you become the person that you are, and increasingly clear to those around you who you have the potential to be. So we all celebrate with you. We celebrate your achievements, who you are, and who you can become through what you do. 
Your experiences shape your life and your abilities, and the experiences associated with getting this qualification will shape it, even if at the moment we don't know exactly how. As Cathy has said, staff too celebrate. Your achievements are their achievements, especially those who are gaining qualifications themselves in teaching and learning. And your whānau, family and friends celebrate with you for the same reasons. Cathy's identified some of the diverse ways that they may have helped you financially, preparing meals, emailing you the assignment that you forgot or got you up on morning, one morning for class after you'd been out too late the night before. And we acknowledge that some of the important people will not be here with you today for a range of reasons. For many students, particularly the capable and work-based learning students, partners or friends may have had doubts about whether or not you should go for it and people may now be envious of your courage and wondering whether maybe they need to have their work-based learning acknowledged too. And I want you to notice the whole range of people who are involved. It's why you graduate publicly. It's why you graduate in community. The community of your class, whānau and family, the institution and the town. Because in the same way that it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a community to graduate a successful midwife or an architectural draftsperson. The fact that you, also, that you have a qualification also means that it's now more likely that your family and friends will also complete tertiary qualifications. And that, of course, will in turn be good for them and their income and their families and, of course, for the staff at Otago Polytechnic and their continued employment. So acknowledging all of the diverse reasons that we have to celebrate I want to offer you some of my learnings in the hope that they might be useful for you, and I have five key points. First one, do what you like to do. If you do what you like to do, you're more likely to end up doing it well. Doing things just because other people think it's a good idea is never a good idea and do what you do do well. And the way you learn to do things well is to prepare yourself and to practice. Preparing for something, practicing it, and then doing both of those some more really does help. Just doing the um, current Gladwell's rule of thumb, uh, taking 10,000 hours to make an expert, doesn't guarantee you expertise, but it will help you considerably more than the person who doesn't put in that time. And if you like doing something, do more of it. You will get better at it and then find all of the other nuances and ways of doing it that keep bringing you joy and satisfaction and a sense of accomplishment. Just doing the same thing over and over again in the same way doesn't necessarily mean you'll get better at doing it. You also need to think about it, to reflect on it, to help improve your skills and your understanding of why things worked or maybe didn't work. When something goes wrong, don't say or think she had it in for me today or the equipment wasn't there. Think, why would her being in a bad mood affect my ability to do my job? Or what could I have done to get the equipment there? That's what people mean by reflecting and over time by making sense of yourself and others. It is the way that people change themselves, change their workplaces, their life prospects, the environment, others around them, and it is how society changes, and it, how, it is how the planet will be saved. Two, expect that what you like to do will change. 
Some of the qualifications that are being awarded today didn't exist 24 years ago. And some of the jobs you'll be doing in 24 or 25 years have not yet been invented. We're graduating today students from our 10th cohort of engineering students from Kanazawa. I have no idea how our visual arts students will be exhibiting in 10 years' time. But what we can predict is that the activities that are important to you now will change either because your circumstances change, for example, because you have enough money to travel or you have children or the ones you have finally leave home, or because some other idea or activity has caught your interest. What's interesting about our interests is that for most of us, our basic interests, whether that's in making things or competing or helping people, is less likely to change. That is, the observable activities might change, but the types of things we like to do remain fairly similar. That's why it's important that we create opportunities to explore all different sorts of activities for ourselves and those around us so that we can be captured or captivators, captivated by the ones that really can help us feel good about who we are and what we do. There will be links to what we've previously done. So if today you're completing a degree in culinary arts and you know you like having your opinion listened to, start to write about cooking or small cafe management. If you like coffee and you've finished an engineering course, look into redesigning coffee machines. Our paid work is not always significantly different from what we do in our hobbies and interests, and blending them improves your skills and creates new opportunities for both. Third point, life keeps coming one day at a time, whether you like it or not, and whether you're ready or not. Things will keep changing, so get on with your life. Don't put things off until you are fitter or older or skinnier or more or less married than you are now. Get on with life even if you don't quite feel ready for some aspects of it. Doing some of the things that you want to do means that you get good at them. And being good at something, virtually anything, helps you feel good enough about yourself to make the other changes that you might want or need to make. Ask for what you want. Doesn't always mean that you'll get it, and it doesn't always mean that you will like what you get, but it increases the likelihood. Others cannot know what's going on in your head as well as you do. And similarly, be prepared to ask for help. People don't always know when you're struggling or when you don't know what you're doing. Asking for assistance helps you get done what you need and want to do. Louise Penny, a Canadian author I enjoy reading, writes of a police officer who says that a good detective has the gumption to say four things. And over time you realise that these four things not only make a good detective or a good business manager, or a good veterinary nurse, but a good teammate, a good adult, and a good citizen. It's someone who has the internal ability to say when circumstances require four things. To say thank you. To say I'm sorry. To say please help me. And to say I don't know. So, you have to look after yourself to be able to attend to others. And the best way of looking after yourself is to keep your daily routines as smooth as possible. The less complicated your daily routines, the more disposable time and headspace you will have for doing what actually matters to you. 
but have more than routines. Work, rest and play are all needed in life. Having a reason to get out of bed makes it more likely not only that you will get up, but also that you'll go to bed early enough to have enough energy to do what you really want to do tomorrow. Being busy with things that have meaning for you keeps you healthy. Sometimes we think we have to understand others in order to keep them and us happy, or at least to keep the peace. Don't expect to understand or please everyone. We can appreciate others without understanding them. They are different. They're different in how they think, what they think, what they like to do, and they will always do things differently. So be it. Looking after yourself doesn't mean that you're responsible for what they do. You cannot control how your colleagues, friends, or family behave, but you can take responsibility for what you do. So, fifth, keep reflecting on your past to understand where you've come from, what you're good at, how you're doing, what you might like to change, do more of, do less of, do differently, and to think about where you're headed. We cannot control the future, but we can make sense of our lives by reflecting on our past to make sense of the current in order to prepare us to cope with whatever the future brings. And over time, peculiar little links come together in ways that have particular meaning for us, often in ways that nobody could predict or understand. So today there is one of those little ones for me. Today we are graduating Randra Bassey. She was the very first occupational therapist in 1993 to graduate from the School of Occupational Therapy at Otago Polytechnic. And now, 20, 21 years later, she's graduating again. Having lived and worked overseas, she enrolled again to do her masters in, in New Zealand with Otago Polytechnic. When I did mine, I had to go to the UK. And she, the first, is back here graduating at what is my last. I look back at all of these lessons and learnings and acknowledge that we can only notice and make sense of what has happened backwards. We need to look carefully at where we've come from, to see where we have been, to make sense of where we're going. And I'm going from Otago Polytechnic. I've had a long involvement with occupational therapy and Otago Polytechnic and head now into, well, I actually refuse to say retirement because old occupational therapists neither tire nor retire. They just find new meaningful occupations. So I offer you, with the occupational lens that, of course, professionally I have, those five key pieces of path smoothing as we help our graduates from Otago Polytechnic celebrate today. Five things are, appreciate the past, your own and others. The past shapes how you manage what comes next. Two, do what you like and do it often enough to do it well. Look after yourself. Get on with your ever-changing life and be an adult, keeping in mind those four key characteristics and be ready to say, I'm sorry, I don't know, please help me, and thank you. Well, thank you, Linda, for those uh, 
inspirational words, and I suppose uh, we can say that we look forward to you looking backwards to see where you might go into your future. So we now, we now have the presentation of academic awards, the first being postgraduate degrees, diplomas, and certificates. And so it gives me great pleasure to invite Glenis Kerr, the Program Leader and Training and Development Coordinator for Capable New Zealand, to present the Master of Professional Practice graduate to Cathy Grant, the Chair of the Polytechnic Council. And this was, award was first conferred last year to Huata Holmes, and this year is the first graduate. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduate for the Master of Professional Practice, Hayden Richards. Thank you, Glenis. I now invite Associate Professor Dr. Sally Baddock, co-head of the School of Midwifery, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduate for School of Midwifery, Postgraduate Diploma in Midwifery Practice, Jennifer Humphreys. the Postgraduate Certificate in Midwifery Practice and the Graduate Certificate in Tertiary Learning and Teaching Level 7, Emma Billis. <laughs> and Bridget Kirkin. Thank you, Sally. I now invite Jackie Hurt, Head of School of Occupational Therapy, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me extremely great pleasure to present the graduates for the School of Occupational Therapy, Master of Occupational Therapy, Randra Bassey. Catherine Shields. James Sunderland. For the Postgraduate Certificate in Occupational Therapy Practice, Hannah Sinclair. For the Bachelor of Occupational Therapy Honours, Alice Lord. Lauren Redshaw. Thank you, Jackie. We'll now have the presentation of graduates who have completed degrees, graduate diplomas and certificates. 
And it gives me great pleasure to invite John Finlay, the Head of School of Architecture, Building and Engineering and Natural Resources, to present his school graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the School of Architecture, Building, Engineering and Natural Resources. For the Bachelor of Engineering Technology Civil, Michael Allen, Richard Hindman, Oliver king -Beg. Alexander Sutherland, Timothy Tawakatini, James Tobin. For the Bachelor of Engineering Technology Mechanical, Hossam Abuna, Taha Alazuni, Salah Al Shahabi. Thomas Beaton, John Etuati, Gareth Fisher. Ethan Forbes, Thomas Maguire, Regan McManus. Blair Mole Queen and Scott Rome. Thank you, John. I now invite to present, I now invite Glenis Kerr, Program Leader and Training and Development Coordinator of Capable New Zealand to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the Graduate Diploma in Tertiary Education. Avtar Singh, Mary Butler and Richard Mitchell. The Graduate Certificate in Tertiary Learning and Teaching, 
Certificate in Mata Ao Māori, Lisa Marie Muir. The Graduate Certificate in Tertiary Learning and Teaching, Deborah Beetson, Stuart Hewson, Nicholas Moss. Thank you, Glennis. I now invite Kay Lyon, Program Leader, Bachelor of Applied Management of, of the College of Enterprise and Development to present her graduates. We're delighted today to have one of our graduates from our Auckland campus joining us in this celebration. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the College of Enterprise and Development Graduate Diploma in Applied Management, Xiao Hu Yang. The Bachelor of Applied Management, Innovation, Entrepreneurship and Sales and Marketing, Warrapool, Japan Day. The Bachelor of Applied Management, Business Excellence, Deborah Barton. Graduate, diploi uh, graduate Diploma in Applied Management. Graduate Samuel Yang. Samuel Yang. <laughs> Bachelor of Applied Management, Business Transformation and Change, Stephen Burton. Bachelor of Applied Management, Project Management, Michael Weir. <laughs> Bachelor of Applied Management, Sport Management, Kylie Tahal. <laughs> Bachelor of Applied Management, Paul Carhall. Margaret Dempster, Oliver Douthwaite. Alexandra Irwin, Thomas Kelly. <laughs> Nicola Moore, Trevor Pollen. Thank you. 
At the Bachelor of Applied Management, Innovation and Entrepreneurship in Sales and Marketing, Warapol Jadpanaya. Thank you, Kay. I now invite Caroline Terpstra, Head of the School of Hospitality, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the School of Hospitality, Bachelor of Culinary Arts, Royden Cullimore. <laughs> Julie Ferry Law. William MacDonald. <laughs> Evan Mickelson. <laughs> Paul Robinson. Thank you, Caroline. I now invite Associate Professor Dr. Sally Baddock, co-head of the School of Midwifery, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for School of Midwifery, Bachelor of Midwifery. Lisa Ashton, Michelle Babb, and Holly Beasley. Camilla Kavanagh, Emily Coxhead, and Amy Dara. Sarah Evans, Caitlin Fody, and Rochelle Fox. Olivia Jenkins, Bonnie Kitty, Gemma Kurth. Deborah Leroux, Georgina Lewis, and Angela McCormick.
Catherine McLean, Georgia McRae, and Natalie Mendoza. Nicola Richards, Mahana Rewaka, Elaine Schmack. Rosemary Sharman, Kelly Sheffield Cranston, Ella Stari Jakovicus. Sarah Stokes, Shelley Teasdale, Michelle Thompson. Claire Wakefield, Elizabeth White and Caitlin Whitford. Thank you, Sally. I now invite Jacqueline Herc, Head of School of Occupational Therapy, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the School of Occupational Therapy, Bachelor of Occupational Therapy. Lucy Anderson, Jessica Barker, Jessica Boyce. Francis Carey, Madison Chilton, Elizabeth Crombie. Jessamay Fanning Randall, Patricia Foley, Amy Foote Mackay.
Ruth French, Sophie Halkett, Lisa Horton. Sarah Hewardean, Emily Hodgkinson, Jennifer Hooker. Nicholas Highland, Victoria Lindsay, Lewis, Louise Lyle. Riley Lyons, Ashley MacArthur, Rachel McCoy. Rachel Morton, Natasha Nalrocki, Jasmine O'Kane. Anna Parker, Hannah Perry, Jesse Pope. Hannah Roxborough, Hannah Sagmire Channing, Gabrielle Seater. Beth Shearer, Amy Smith, Penny Stead. Emma Steer, Amanda Triskler. Amy van der Hayden, Nicole Wilcox.
Thank you, Jackie. I now invite Chris Williamson, Head of the School of Social Services, to present his graduate. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to pre present the graduates for School of Social Services, Bachelor of Social Services, Graduate Diploma in Applied Man Management, Mary Lee Taylor. <laughs> Bachelor of Social Services, Beth Purcell. Thank you, Chris. We will now have the presentation of graduates who have completed diplomas and certificates. So it gives me great pleasure to invite John Finlay, the Head of School of Architecture, Building, Engineering and Natural Resources, to present his school graduates to Cathy Grant, the Chair of our Council. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the School of Architecture, Building, Engineering and National Natural Resources. For the New Zealand Diploma in Engineering Civil, Level 6, Wayne Anderson, Byron Dodge and Shane Ede. Aidan Erickson, Gregory Field, Jack Fraser. <laughs> Jubin Gautam. David Malcolm, Jacob Manson. <laughs> William McKee, Mark McKenzie, Tagutsa Maruri. Timothy Notman, Bryn Pearson, and Hamish Roach. For the New Zealand Diploma in Engineering Mechanical, Level 6, Nathan Beer, Nagasai Gopi, Cameron Matheson. Gregory Redae and Charlie, Charlie Stocker. <laughs> Samuel Techin, Wei Hong Zhu.
for the Diploma in Architectural Drafting Level 6 and the National Diploma in Architectural Technology Level 6, Augusta Adar, Medina Aman and Beth Calverley. Carl Douglas, Stephanus Faber, Lewis Grant. Christopher Hoskin, Jenna Kinraid, Matthew McNaught. <laughs> Campbell Ritchie, Logan Taylor. Courtney Todd. For the National Diploma in Construction Management Level 6 and the National Diploma in Quantity Surveying Level 6, Brett Anderson, Thomas Agnew, Cameron Bruce. Amber Buxton, Duncan Campbell, Scott Fitzgerald. Lachlan Landells, Michael McKee, Danielle Robertson. <laughs> Hugh Rowe. Timothy Scott. <laughs> Stephen Smithson and Luke White. For the National Diploma in Construction Management Level 6 and the Certificate in Sustainable Practice Level 5, Andrew Jackson. <laughs> For the National Diploma in Quantity Surveying Level 6, C. Yan or Rachel Chan, Linda Marfell and Rebecca Marley.
For the Certificate in Carpentry Level 4, Jaden Armishaw, Timothy Benison, Jonathan Berry. Christopher Campbell, Michael Coleman, Carl Davies. <laughs> Mason Grubb. Adam Harvey, Imogen Jacobs. <laughs> Jason Kappa and Megan Legg. Shannon Martin, Chaz McCammon, Michael Noon. <laughs> Thomas Offen. Bronwyn Padman, Matthew Shaw. <laughs> Dylan Shepherd and David Solon. <laughs> Reagan Stevens, Chase Thomas, Joshua Vanderbilt. Alex Webster, David Wessels, Daniel Wilson. <laughs> Michael Wilson and Nicholas Wilson. For the Certificate in Electrical Technology Level 4, Hayden Cleghorn, Sharina Glennie. <laughs> Shona McCrory, Devon Thomas.
for the Certificate in English and Engineering, Mao Hatta, Kazuki Hiyashi, Akari Kakuda. Hiro Kondo, Kaoru Michi, Saki Minato. <laughs> Kazuki Mashima. Takuya Miyashita Yuki Naya. <laughs> Yosuke Nishi. Now Yuki Ogami, Maya Okuda. <laughs> Atsushi Sasamoto, Ayami Sugawara, Kyohei Takahisa. <laughs> and Saya Sukumoto, Ese Yoshida. For the Certificate in Automotive Engineering Level 3 and the National Certificate in Motor Industry Entry Skills Level 2, Stephen Ashton, Luke Fowler. <laughs> William Hay, Gregory Hollock. Jacob Hurring, Mark Keel, Dresden Kirov. <laughs> Rodin Nand. Regan Watson and Conrad Williams. For the Certificate in Automotive and Mechanical Engineering Level 2, Raweri Campbell Mamia, Christopher Meikle. <laughs> For the Diploma in Horticulture, Level 5, Paula Griana.
for the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Amenity Level 4, the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Landscape Level 4, and the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Production Horticulture Level 4, Raoul Lenehan. For the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Amenity Level 4, the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Nursery Production Level 4, and the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Production Horticulture Level 4, Nicola Follerton. <laughs> For the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Amenity Level 4, the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Landscape Level 4, Bernadette Hardegger. <laughs> For the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Amenity Level 4 and the National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Production Horticulture Level 4, Giselle Gallagher, Tabitha Mueller. National Certificate in Horticulture Advanced Amenity Level 4, Karen Scott. <laughs> For the National Certificate in Horticulture, Arboriculture Level 4, Michael Abbott, Aston Brooks, Michael Cooney. Ashley Greertrix and Philip Skur. <clears throat> For the National Certificate in Horticulture Level 4, Timothy Blakely and Kimberly Burton. Thank you, John. I now invite Glenis Kerr, Program Leader and Training Development Coordinator of Capable New Zealand, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the Certificate in Mata Ao Māori, Jane Craker, Deborah Davey, Rachel Dibble. Jennifer Hamlin, Stefani Mann. <laughs> Francesca Matthews, Jean Patterson.
Thank you, Glennis. I now invite Jean Tilly Short, our campus manager of Central Otago, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for Central Otago. Certificate in Sustainable Practice Level 5, Cherie Smart, Troy Williams. National Certificate in Sports Turf Management Level 4, Justin Rawcliffe. Thank you, Jean. I now invite Kay Lyon, Program Leader for the Bachelor of Applied Management of the College of Enterprise and Development, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the New Zealand Diploma in Business, Maria Stevenson. <laughs> Diploma in Accounting Level 5, Mialin Lu. Diploma in Business Level 5, Alexandra Melville. The National Certificate in Business Administration Level 4, the National Certificate in Business Administration and Computing Level 3, Ashley Cumberbeach. Thank you, Kay. I now invite Professor Leonie Schmidt, Head of the Dunedin School of Art, to present her graduate. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduate for the Dunedin School of Art in the Diploma in Ceramic Arts Level 6, Susan Kirkwood. Leone. I now invite Caroline Terstra, Head of the School of Hospitality, to present her graduate. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for the School of Hospitality, Diploma in Culinary Arts Level 5, Patrick Reitveld. The National Diploma in Hospitality Management, Level 5, Melinda Campbell, Ting Yu Huang, April McLeod. Katrina Melrose, Sharon Merritt, Kirsty Milne Reeves. Wong Pham, Andrew Rapson. <laughs> Kerrod Smith, Charlotte Steele.
Andrew Townsend, Chu Chu Zhou. The Certificate in Professional Restaurant Bar and Wine Level 4, Philip Boys, Jennifer Sell. <laughs> the Certificate in Cookery Level 3 and the National Certificate in Hospitality Basic Cookery Level 3. Logan Black, Alana Cadman, Alison Cannon. Alicia Coombs, Connor Middleton. <laughs> Maxine Woodnorth, Karen Woodrow. The National Certificate in Hospitality Basic Cookery Level 3, Yingzi Tang. The Certificate in Cafe and Bar Level 3, Damon Mull Queen. Thank you, Caroline. I now invite Jeanette O'Fee, Head of the School of Veterinary Nursing, to present her graduates. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present the graduates for School of Veterinary Nursing, National Diploma in Veterinary Nursing, National Certificate in Veterinary Nursing, Sophie Cookson, Marika Waghorn. National Diploma in Veterinary Nursing, Victoria Cusso, Stacey Robertson. <laughs> Vanessa Skiffington, Kate Still. Certificate in Rural Animal Technology, Level 5. National Certificate in Veterinary Nursing, Peter Gallagher. <laughs> Certificate in Rural Animal Technology, Level 5. Amber Firmage, Nicola Goodship. Rebecca Hersag, Alison Marshall. <clears throat> National, 
National Certificate in Veterinary Nursing, National Certificate in Animal Care, Terry Bryer. National Certificate in Veterinary Nursing, Luella Osborne, Stephanie Bryant, Maureen Baker. Bethany Benison, Shawnee Buckley, Raquel Byfield. Ashley Cullinan, Stacey Campbell, Nicola Childs. <laughs> Hannah Diffie. Sharon Evans, Stacey Fairweather. Renee Ferguson, Gemma Fitzgerald Snow, Nicola Fullen, Nicole Fullen, sorry. Gina Glacey, Melissa Gross. Paige Haddock, Darcia Harborn, Sarah Harkness. Valerie Hendricks, Lisa Hill, Michelle James. Christina Keller, Lee Lamb, Alice Lane. Caitlin Mackey, 
Jenna Marfell, Tania Mason. Teresa McCauley, Renee McCarty, Kathleen Milligan. Cherie Palmer, Sinead Park Wilton, Emma Peak. Sarah Prescott, Emma Rout, Ashley Shepherd. Lydia Spur, Ashley Taylor, Priscilla Vaughan. Lisa Vingo, Elsa Wardell, Joanna, oh sorry, Joanne Wotherston. Melissa Wycliffe, <laughs> Meredith Wills, Melinda Ratt. And last but not least, National Certificate in Animal Care, Carla Wedlock. Thank you very much, Jeanette, and lovely to hear the hoopla and well done to everybody. That concludes the presentation of the Academic Awards, and so we now have the presentation of Special Student Awards. So it gives me great pleasure to invite Ewan Oates, Operations Manager of Naila Love, to present the J.A. Valentine Scholarship to a student selected by Naila Love for completing the Certificate in Carpentry Level 4 program here at Otago Polytechnic. And the recipient of that award is Mason Grubb.
Well done, Mason, and thank you to Naylor Love for your ongoing support. The next award is to be presented by Matthew Holdridge is the Academic Achievement Award, which is sponsored by Otago Daily Times. The award is for personal achievement in studies at Otago Polytechnic and is awarded to Catherine McLean, Bachelor of Midwifery. Thank you to the Otago Daily Times for your ongoing support. The next award is the Otago Polytechnic Education Foundation Achievement Award, which is for outstanding achievement in exceptional circumstances, whether that be academically, personally or institutionally. And it is awarded to Christine O'Sullivan Perrin, Master of Fine Arts. The next award is the Otago Polytechnic Education Foundation Excellence Award, and this is for graduating students who have shown excellence in their field of study, and this is awarded to Courtney Todd, Diploma in Architectural Drafting Level 6. Well done and congratulations to you all. So now it is the student's right of reply, so it gives me great pleasure to invite Rebecca Swindells from the Otago Polytechnic Students Association to reply on behalf of the students. I know you're all itching to get out of your seats, so I'll make this as short as possible. And I do assure you that this is size 14 and 1.5 line spacing, so it won't take me that long. Good afternoon, graduates, their families and friends, members, members of council, Otago Polytechnic staff, Mayor Dave Cull, and honoured guests. It is with great pleasure that I am here today to deliver a reply on behalf of the graduating students. Before I begin, I'm just going to introduce myself. So my name is Rebecca, and I'm the Otago Polytechnic Students Association President for 2014. I myself graduated with my Bachelor of Applied Management from Otago Polytechnic in March 2012. And I'm now working towards my Master's in Professional Practice. Firstly, I would like to congratulate you all on crossing the stage today and gaining your certificate, diploma, degree, postgraduate or master's qualifications. Gaining a qualification of any sort is a huge achievement and one that you should all be proud of. Be proud of yourself and be proud of those achievements. Today we recognise those achievements and we recognise that it is not in any way easy to complete a tertiary education qualification. Tertiary education is stressful. As students, we have to jump a number of hurdles. For some of us, these may, may be financial. For others, these are academic. And for some, these are personal. Today, I want all the graduating students to stand proud and acknowledge that no matter what the hurdle, you faced it and you successfully jumped it even if it did take a couple of attempts. Enjoy those celebrations, you deserve them. Secondly, I would now, on behalf of the 2014 March graduation, Otago Polytechnic graduates would like to make a few thank yous. To the whānau of all of our graduates, that is, all the mums and dads, grandparents, aunties, uncles, husbands or wives, brothers and sisters and children, with your love and support, these graduates have made it to this special day in their lives. 
to the lecturers, program managers, heads of schools, administrators, the student success and support teams, leadership team and council. I thank you on behalf of the graduates for your vision and support while they were with us at Otago Polytechnic. Graduates, sometimes in your life you will go on a journey. It will be the longest journey you have ever taken and that is self-discovery. For some of you, this may be the end of the tertiary education side of your journey. For others, this is just the beginning. Completing this qualification is just one step in your life journey, and you still have many more steps to take. Always remember to reach for those goals, no matter how far away they may seem. Enjoy your celebrations tonight and into the weekend with your family and friends, and good luck, good luck for your future, wherever it may take you from here. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, for your words of wisdom. So can I now ask you to please stand for the singing of the national anthem. And the first verse will be sung in Māori and then English... Before the official party leaves, can I ask you all to give three cheers to acknowledge the wonderful effort and commitment shown by our graduates. Graduates. Oh, graduates it is, isn't it now? <laughs> Let's get it right. Hip hip. Yeah. Hip hip. Yeah. Hip hip. Yeah. Well done. So So well, well done everybody and enjoy this very special occasion. The sun is still shining, so go and enjoy the evening and your lives be long and happy. Please remain standing while the official party leaves. Um.